Welcome back. It is lovely to have you here joining me while I try and make my very own handmade Zippo style lighter from scratch. In the previous episode, you saw me bend, solder, turn, and assemble the inner case. It works. And in the last episode, we have been making this tooling right here. And this is my attempt at making a deep drawing die. It involves a binder plate, a die plate, and a punch. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be running over to my neighbor's workshop to borrow his hydraulic press so that we can see if pushing hard enough on this punch is going to suck this copper down into that hole and form an outer case. So we're gonna go commandeer a hydraulic press. But first, we gotta thank today's sponsor, which is Mech Arena, and it is the perfect game for people that like shooter games but don't have the time like they used to. You can play two or three matches in less than 10 minutes and still get in a really fun game. The maps are tight and designed for short and intense gameplay with tons of action and tons of respawns. The game isn't a reflex first-person shooter, but it doesn't feel as slow as other mech games might. Part of what I love about the game is it's really immersive with great sound effects and haptic feedback through the vibration of your phone. And my favorite thing about Mech Arena is they even made us a custom skin called the Steel Lancer. Check it out. There's a brand new pilot, Maverick. They've overhauled the Paradise Plaza map. There's a Brazilian carnival event happening and a St. Patrick's Day event. You can win exclusive skins, a new pilot, helmet, and much more. It's completely free to play on iOS and Android right now. And if you sign up using my link in the description below or the QR code on screen, you'll get our custom skin skin, 350 A coins, and 50,000 credits. So please, don't wait around. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video, Mech Arena. Let's get to it. Have a look at this gorgeous workshop. Hydraulic press here. I'm gonna mess around with his dies. Oh, look at that. You got an anvil and you got some nice tong racks on it. Yeah, well, that's actually yours. Holy crap. Yeah, I haven't got a load of bits and pieces off your dinner. Oh, handy. I thought I recognized that. And apparently this is actually something I made years ago. <laughs> he ended up with when I moved to America. That's so funny. Oh, no. Look how close it is. I'll have to deal with that in a second. Since I didn't know what press we were going to use for this tooling, I tried to make everything as general as possible, and we just barely missed it. On the bottom, we'll see how it goes on the top. We're going to go get some milling table clamps so that we can clamp that down. Let's turn it on and see if we can get things lined up. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, that's brilliant. There is tons of control. Okie dokie, let's oil it up. There's so much friction with this. We just want it to be completely saturated with oil. Punch is lubed up, folks, and it is ready to try our very first go. This is test number one. Here we go. Oh, you can see the binder plate lifting up. Whoa. No! <laughs> no! Oh, it was our biggest fear, Jamie. It punched a bloody hole. I tell you what, though, I made a cool art piece. Goodness gracious, it's gorgeous. We are going to try annealing the next bit of copper. I want a sweatshirt in that color. That's so cool. Test number two. Nice and slow now. Nice and slow. Come on. Come on. Rats! <laughs> I did it again. This is so obvious to anybody with skill and knowledge that this is exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> there is no chance anything better was going to happen than me punching holes. Oh, dude, it looks beautiful. <laughs> It looks like what, Jamie? So we're gonna take the bottom die out and we're going to make the radius of that inner corner much larger to see if that slows down the bend and makes it less stressful on the metal. I think I've just noticed it's already cracking and from the back, that's most definitely a crack. Fourth time's the charm. Okay, we've done a little bit. No! <sighs> a proper engineered deep drawing setup would have many stages with many different sized punch, many different sized dies. What we're gonna try is the least costly adjustments. So we're gonna try and make a smaller punch. I must say though, with that midway anneal, that is the best deep drawing we've done so far.
and it's now the moment of truth. Will a smaller punch be any better? Probably not. Come on now. Oh, we've touched it. No! No, no! Deep drawing is apparently, who would have known, an extremely technical and precise engineering problem. But I've just realized, by virtue of our binder plate being larger in diameter on that inner hole, we've actually created a little bit of another previous step. Because we are not having success, which means that we need to put less stress on the material and progressively work it down. And a larger hole will do just that. And our binder plate just happens to have a larger hole. Without a binder plate, but using the binder plate, we will see if we can start it make a little progress, then flip the binder plate over and use the bottom hole, and then use the final size punch. Maybe it works. Attempt number 357, starting with a large hole. Just really doesn't feel like it's drawing in the metal like it should. Oh, there we go, that looks a little better. What do we do, do we keep going? Do we anneal it? What do we do? <laughs> Maybe we do this, a little heat while we do it. I don't think that will have done anything. You know it's actually sucking it down. Awesome. Easy does it. Easy. Let's kneel it again. God, that just never gets less painful. Oh, I mean, we, were, we were further than we've ever been as well. So that's the failure we just experienced. And I think that is the deepest that we've drawn it by a pretty good shot. So we might have been onto something. All right, back to the drawing board. Maybe it's more tooling, who knows? I feel very disheartened that it's not working, but I know it's got to work. I mean, this happens, people deep draw things. There's gotta be a way for it to work. We're gonna need a whole lot more sizes of punch and a whole lot more sizes of die. Now milling this stuff took forever. But I could actually get laser cut 10 millimeter or 3 eighths of an inch thick steel with different hole sizes. And then all I would have to do is put the little inside corner radius on. So while we might not have a laser cutter, we have a laser jet printer. <laughs> we've got a laser jet printer. We've printed off all the different sizes that we've got. They're the two extremes. With a total of 12 new die hole plates on the way, we're going to need more punches. I don't think we need to make 12, but I at least think we're gonna need four, five, six punches for us to make use of all these new plates that'll hopefully be here in a week. we have a whole bunch of stages. And through the magic of lasers and logistics, we now have 12 more steps to be able to form this metal. We've got a lot of cleaning up to do and every single one is going to require an extremely heavy radius, just like the final step. So with the plates ready, and with this copper that's just arrived, we're gonna cut these into squares, and then we're gonna head over to our neighbors at Usher Engineering to borrow their press again. That's insane! It is frankly unbelievable that this has worked. It is only tall enough to make the top half. And the question is, do we keep going on this to make the long bottom, or do we keep it as the top and play it safe? Well, I've decided that we're gonna call this the top of our Zippo, and we are gonna try starting all over again to make the longer extrusion for the bottom. This thing isn't perfect, 
but I'm so shocked, so ridiculously shocked that we got this far at all. Hopefully we can replicate it and more for the other half. Oh, I broke it again. We're getting so unbelievably close. It hasn't cracked yet, but I do need a few more millimeters of depth. So what I'm gonna do is instead of pushing down with this small punch, I'm gonna go back to some wider plates and I'm gonna push in more material around the outside to bend that back in. To effectively do a few more versions of the steps that it took to get this by taking some material from the flange. So we keep having failures. I got to the very last pressing on the last one and it broke at the bottom of the case. We've got this much copper left. This is getting incredibly tiring and very frustrating. Hopefully today we get this done. This is it. Weeks of work comes down to this. Please, pretty please, don't break. Please don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Come on. Please, 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 please. Yes. Yes. We did it. Oh my goodness. This has been utterly ridiculous. The only thing that kept me hanging on is knowing that at some point in time, somebody had to do this very thing to work out the calculations that are now used in industry to mean that this is an incredibly repeatable and reliable process when done correctly. For me, it was not repeatable or reliable, but we did get some somewhat crude but acceptable looking results. I'm so happy that these are finally deep drawn. Please go check out today's sponsor, which was Mecarina. The links are down below. And please, please also go check out Usher Engineering on YouTube. I'm so grateful they let us use their workshop. Please go subscribe to their channel and see the awesome car stuff they do. And an exciting news, if you like the look of these trousers or pants, this is the new color of steels. So be sure to follow Alex Steelco on Instagram to find out when we launch them.